Okay, so let me throw up this chart taking a look at market expectations that just get more aggressive and more hawkish going into the rest of the year. There's no expectation when you take a look at this that today is going to be any kind of, uh, you know, done point for the RBA. Why should they or why would they be going for a bigger than expected hike to try and, I, I guess, front load? Given that the, the wage spiral, the inflation pressures are not as bad here compared to some other economies. Uh, good morning, Heidi. Well, I think with the RBA, like many other central banks around the world, it's it's not necessarily front-loading, it's the race to get back to neutral. Uh, and that's where they're all heading, and that's why we're seeing those those larger moves uh, up front. And you're absolutely right. The inflation dynamic, the growth dynamic here in Australia is different to what we're seeing in the US or Europe, where you, know, you, you do have more of a fear around a recession. Here we see quite positive momentum in the economy. We still have uh, some flexibility around the labour market with that wage pressure to come through. Again, different to what you're seeing in the US, that creates um, an environment where the RBA can hike rates without fearing about too much damage to the economy. And I think they will move towards 40 basis points to get back on that sort of incremental 25 basis points path. They, they did a hint that they were keen to do that at the last meeting, but at the same time, they said that they see these 25 basis point increases as being more normal. And I think that's why the market split between the two. For us, uh, it is a case of getting back to that normal level or neutral level, excuse me, of interest rates by the end of the year. That's why we expect them to do a 40 basis point move to really keep in touch with what we're seeing in terms of the larger moves from the US and elsewhere. Um, but that'll be it. I think they'll move back to something that's more gradual in terms of those normal 25 basis points increment. They're leaning less away from the official data when it comes to wage growth and thinking more about their own uh, contacts within the business community and what they're hearing. And so I think that gives them uh, scope to think about they will see those wage pressures coming in. Inflation is definitely above their target, whether at a headline or core level. Uh, and they're keen to cap that off before it does become embedded in inflation expectations. Right, an impact that the strength of the consumer. But they're also getting that really big help when it comes to commodities markets right now, right? Take a look at this chart with that correlation between the Aussie dollar, just as an example, and the surge that we continue to see in commodities, spot commodities pricing hitting a fresh record high. And that correlation at an eight-month high for that 21-day view would... Would they be thinking about this? And, and if you look at this, where do you see the opportunities when it comes to a continued commodities boom? Well, yeah, obviously the commodities outlook is increasingly important for thinking about the Australian outlook, for thinking about the direction of the currency. Uh, I think at the first point, it does creates higher income for the economy as we should see that filter down uh, through uh, resource companies, through dividends, through to consumers. Um, it also means that on the fiscal side of things, it increases uh, the fiscal position of the government. So again, like the US, we expect a larger fiscal drag. It does create the potential for the Australian government to offer more fiscal stimulus if it needed to in the future. I think that's a, another big proponent to, to look at why Australia is different at the moment. But I think more importantly, we look at how elevated uh, co commodity prices are, whether it's oil or whether it's some of the bulks, uh, we do start to see those come off a little bit from their very high levels over the course of this year. Uh, and naturally, we think that obviously weighs on the direction of the US Australian dollar for a little right. bit. So we would expect it to be higher by the end of the year, but not much higher than it is currently. Uh, we'd see it close to 74 cents by the end of the year rather than thinking about uh, 80 cents in that regard. And we also think about that interest rate differential between the US and Australia, again, thinking about what it means to the currency, uh, starting to narrow as both Right. Uh, economies are hiking those rates. And China is so important for the direction of the commodity space, right? This chart on the Bloomberg showing that global funds have now turned net buyers of Chinese assets, given perhaps an improvement in the regulatory backdrop, not to mention, of course, COVID restrictions being eased. Uh, Kerry, every time we see this sort of pop in Chinese assets, uh, is not really that sustainable. Can it offset the concerns over its growth prospects? The Chinese officials and the government there is facing, you know, a very unappealing trilemma of uh, a five and a half percent growth target, maintaining the zero COVID policy, uh, and also trying to uh, deleverage the economy as well in terms of the property market. I think it's been very encouraging what you've seen in the last few weeks in terms of the stimulus announcement that have come through, both for creating supply and demand in the economy. So thinking about consumers and households and how they spend, but also ensuring that companies can stay open. So when that demand comes back, they're not facing 
causing you know an inflationary pressure, uh, and also looking at the supply chains as well, uh, and thinking about how to support the housing market a little bit more uh, in terms of what we're seeing with mortgage rates moving. So that's a very positive. And then on the flip side of that, you're also seeing some encouraging news around the regulatory environment, uh, and I think that's very mm. important for how investors have been seeing China in terms of just increasing regulatory risk. We've moved from that announcement phase. Now we're thinking about implementation. With that being clarity, with what that actually means, and I think that as that proceeds and that reopening trade continues to, to gain traction, right. you'll see Chinese assets perform better in this environment. But we would be fearful around uh, what it means for some of those larger tech names, given that they still have a long period of adjustment to go through yeah. with those new regulations.